Um, I'm, uh, before I even read into what this quote is, uh, I'll say this. Uh, I'm so sick of, for, for us gamers that are PC gamers, I'm so sick of the like scapegoating and the um, projecting issues onto other things when most of us that have been PC gamers for a long time know exactly what's going on here. And we've seen uh, at the from the end of last year to the beginning of uh, you know the first half of this year, we've seen a bunch of terrible PC releases. Um, and I've seen a lot of projecting on, oh, it's a VRAM issue. But I don't accept that. Because what's stupid about that is, you know, you have consoles where that same exact game plays perfectly fine, but it plays terribly on PC. And you're talking about people on PC <clears throat> that have better graphics cards than a console runs and more VRAM than a console runs. Then tell me why that game still performs terribly on PC, but it performs fine on console. It's an optimization issue from the developers. A lot of these developers... And it, this is the thing for me too. With a lot of these games, when they come out, it's really, 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 really obvious. Whenever they just they focus on the the console version of the game, they don't optimize a PC version, and they just port over the console version to PC on release. You see a lot of issues um, in just details of things like how you interface with like menus, things of that nature that would be very, very good for console, but work terribly on PC. I can give you an example of, of something like Hogwarts Legacy, right? Hogwarts Legacy apparently played very, very well on console, but it was balls on PC. It felt terrible. It was There was all kinds of stuttering, frame drop constantly. It was gross, dude. I flushed it after eight days because it felt bad, bad. I think the content in the game was probably pretty good, but I just couldn't play it. It was it, it ruined my experience because the performance was so bad. But the reason I know that they ported that game was because there were things like, for instance, going into the menu if you were going to go like change the appearance of your character, and just rotating your character, right in 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 the appearance to to take a look at your character while you're changing their outfit and stuff like that, you couldn't do it with your mouse. You couldn't click on them with your mouse and hold down and move the character around or anything like that. They literally only had it set up to where you had to let go of your mouse and go use your, your flipping uh, directional arrow keys on your keyboard to move the character around. But if you picked up your controller attached to your PC or whatever, you could, you could move it around with a thumbstick. You could move the character around with a thumbstick, right? Or um, even to the effect of... <clears throat> Things like on PC, when you can tell when a dev knows what they're doing and optimizing for PC because there will be like um, hotkeys for the, the menus, right? You bring up your menu in the game or whatever to look at your inventory or what have you. Hogwarts Legacy, same thing. The hotkeys for moving around and like uh, going backwards through a menu was escape, right? Games that are, are optimized well for PC and developed for PC specifically you'll be able to go click on those hotkeys wherever they are on the menu, right? To take you back. That way you're not having to let go of WASD all the time or, and, and go click escape all the time. Click escape all the time. You can just go click on them with your mouse. They didn't do that. It was, it was an obvious port, obvious port. And I saw the same thing from, from software with Elden Ring. So the, I see this all the time in games, you know, where they're, uh, you know, Key binding was is gross and it's just not there, you know, which is, is something that should just be default for every single game on every single platform for, um, you know, in the year we're at with gaming and stuff. But it's, uh, you know, this whole projecting onto, oh, well, it, it must be PC gamers running potato machines or something. Dude, it's not. It's the developers being terrible at optimizing their games. And actually developing their games specifically for PC. They don't want to do it. I'm not saying it's an easy thing to do by any means. It's actually a very difficult thing to do. Because you're talking about developing games for console is, is a much more streamlined process. 
you're only having to take into consideration a, a few select configurations of hardware. It's very limited. It's pretty straightforward. Whereas with PC, it's vast. And you have to take into consideration a, a lot of different things. And developers don't want to do it. They don't want to take the time to do it. So then what they basically do is they create the console versions because it's easier. It's more streamlined. And then they go port it to PC, make it run well enough, and release it. And that is a terrible way to do business as far as I'm concerned. But then we get this kind of crap where uh, we, we get this projection onto, oh, well, it's, a, it's PC. It's the PC gamers issue. You know, <laughs> it's their potato machines or they don't have enough VRAM or whatever, which is stupid. That doesn't make any sense. That's not even logical at all. Uh, Wolong Fallen Dynasty's game director makes half-baked apology that puts the blame on gamers' PCs for terrible PC version. Uh, Masakazu Hirayama, director and producer of Wolong Fallen Dynasty, has released an official apology over the controversial PC version of the title. These remarks appeal to, appear to be insincere. The Team Ninja game received a, a great deal of positive reviews for console versions, but mixed and negative criticism has surrounded the version that landed on PC. The developer is reaching a crucial point in the release since Woe Long Fallen Dynasty has only been available since March of this year. In order to keep up sales, an adequate version for PC is necessary. However, despite this fact, public relations statements and a letter from the director are less than assuring. Instead of the usual developer explanation of pushing out a game too early, the Woe Long Fallen Dynasty director is blaming user PCs for bugs and other issues. According to the director's letter, which was posted to the Woe Long Fallen Dynasty website on July 31st, it is more of an issue for each individual household. The optimization and bug fixes for the PC version, which is saved until the very end of the letter, says the following. We can't talk about the future without talking about the past and present difficulties with the game. We apologize for the inconvenience caused to everyone playing the PC version of Wolong since its release. I can assure you that the development team has re read each and every report posted on various bull bulletin boards, social channels, uh, our customer support department, and we have placed top priority on optimization and bug fixes. However... There are many combinations of PC environments in each household. While our team continues to expand the environments where the game is checked post-launch, it will take time to replicate issues and properly fix them. I promise that we will continue to make improvements so that we can play with peace of mind as soon as possible. We apologize for this delay. From the bottom of our hearts, we truly appreciate everyone who takes time to not only play our game, but to send us comments, streams, and screenshots in the hopes of helping us continue to make the experience better for all gamers. In order to fulfill your expectations, our development team is committed in the efforts to make the game even more enjoyable for you. With that in mind, uh, I hope we can count on your continued support for Wolong Fallen Dynasty. Um, <clears throat> situations like the Wolong Fallen Dynasty PC version are becoming too common in gaming. Agreed. This is what this is this is what is, is uh, I'm getting at. This is what's driving me nuts. However, there are many combinations of PC environments in each household, and while our, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. And you guys didn't want to optimize. Look, there. this is what also, it, it would be different if literally like people wouldn't game on PC also if this was the case. But hear me out. <clears throat> there are a lot of developers out there that develop games for PC that the games feel great on release. And shout out to all those developers. Right, <laughs> there are even developers out there that release games for all platforms, and the PC version feels great. You know why? Because they're good developers and they know what the crap they're doing, as opposed to these developers that don't understand how to optimize for PC and only know how to develop for console, and they do this crap all the time. If there were no games, if there were no developers out there that could produce games that felt good on PC, people wouldn't game on PC. But you want to blame the fact that PC is naturally a, a large variety of configurations for your delinquency in, in being able to, first and foremost, address making a quality product for the platform you're pushing the game out on. That's your fault. That's not our fault. That's your fault. 
You shouldn't have released the game when you did for this platform because it wasn't ready. That's your fault. You know, I'm so tired of this projection. Um, while Team Ninja and uh, Hirayama may have good intentions in mind, at the very least have acknowledged the issue, gamers are not the problem. Those who have chosen to purchase and download Wolong uh, want the best possible experience and cannot be attained without a proper PC port. In fact, other Team Ninja games such as Neo and Dead or Alive had had, have had success with PC versions, which indicates there is more of a problem with Wolong. Um, it is becoming much more common for developers like Team Ninja to blame individual systems or claim it released a little too early in order to save face. Yeah, the video game industry has suffered a great deal in, uh, in the past few months with titles like Star Wars Jedi Survivor and Diablo 4 requiring countless patches just to be playable. Now, look, I think there's a big difference between these two titles. Star Wars Jedi Survivor was balls on all platforms on release. This game should not have released when it did release. And it's still terrible on PC from what I understand. Um, so, another EA published game. EA is disgusting. And um, this was... Um, why am I blanking? Uh, re, re, re. Respawn, yeah. <laughs> Man, I couldn't put the last part of their name together. Uh, Respawn, right? I mean, this is... And look, I just talked about this as well. This is uh, uh, Star Wars, right? You put Star Wars on uh, the name on a game. And to be fair, the, the previous version of this game was is a beloved game. And, and uh, uh, the previous iteration of this series is a beloved game. And, and then they made this one. And, and uh, they baited a lot of people with a terrible performing game. It feels bad. But... Um, Second highest ever selling Star Wars game on Steam. And it's a 63% positive review score on Steam. Um, over 32,000 reviews alone. And it's a piece, a hot piece of garbage. Should have never released. Uh, it feels terrible, dude. This is, this is you know, the PC gaming world is, is plagued with this kind of crap. I don't think Diablo 4 was bad. Diablo 4 had a lot of beta testing and stuff too. I don't think it was bad. I mean, they needed some patches and stuff to get some bugs figured out, but um, it wasn't anything on the same scale of, as Jedi uh, Survivor, I don't think. This style of development is leading more players to proclaim the future of gaming should require developers to release completed games instead of a money first and fix problems later mentality. I agree. I, this is something I also talk about all the time. It seems quite often to me that developers and publishers... Um, don't look at connectivity and being able to touch their game after release as a utility. They look at it as a crutch. They go, ah, it's not ready. Who gives a crap? Send it out. Let's make our money. Let's continue touching the game after the fact, and we'll turn it into something decent. That's not fair. That's not fair to us as the consumer. It shouldn't be done like that. You should not be leaning on connectivity. Their, your, your ability to be able to continue to work on the game after the fact as a crutch. It should be a utility to be able to address issues that were unforeseen. <clears throat> and not touch a game that you knew was broken when you released it. It's a plague, dude, on the PC gaming industry. And, um, I mean, console deals with issues as well. But it does seem more often than not to me that the, um, the PC side of, of, of gaming is quite often dealing with console versions that feel good and then PC versions that feel terrible. And you can tell they're just ported over. No optimization at all. And it's gross. Shouldn't happen like that. There needs to be regulations and, and stuff put in place to hold these businesses accountable, really. is I, I think that's the only way that we're going to end up being able to move forward with some kinds of standards and regulations or something, but I don't know how we're going to be able to get that going. It's a, it's a really, it's kind of like the wild west, dude. It's really, really weird. 